Dominic Noble, everyone, is joining us tonight to uh, cover for Terra. This has been kind of hilarious. Um, all right, so we've had the last time, uh, uh, the last, all right, several times, Terra was out, and I asked Dom to fill in, and then Monday comes around, and I think I think that was my migraine night, and then next night Terra was back, so Dom wasn't here. And then we did another, um, it came around again, Tara was going to be gone. I'm like, hey, can you fill in? And I forget, for some reason or another, I think the internet was dead that your, night, that week. Your computer was downloading something or updating something that just went on for donkey's ears? Yeah, some shit are like that. So it's been like three times before this. And finally, we got Don back you've here. You've been quite the tease. <laughs> Incredibly patient with us, but you're back. Thank you, dude. Dominic Noble here. He is uh does uh loss adaptation on YouTube, among other things. Please do check him out. He's got a YouTube channel and all that. Oh boy. Um I also am the proud owner of a standing desk now, so I can do this. Uh, uh, that's I can't put this on YouTube, dude. This this is gonna get me banned. Ah, you know fuck. You're killing my monetization right there. Your hips are killing my monetization. And they are a destructive force. It's true. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. This is probably a very distinctly American thing. It's probably distressing for you. Have you seen the Tucker Carlson what was it, testicle tanning, they're calling it? I saw something about that on Twitter and was immediately convinced it must be a parody because no human being would intentionally make something like this without it's great irony. It's not. It's not. They call it bromeopathic. I'm sorry, a Tucker, Tucker Carlson is the douchebag from Fox News. With yes. The white supremacy. Yes, and he's making a documentary about about low testosterone in men. For some reason! I, I'm assuming he has great stock in testosterone pills and... Oh, this the nuts tanning device? Like what? I... Yeah, it's, it's apparently... Infra, you shine infrared light at your balls, which is... They call it testicle tanning, which is impossible. It's like shining a light at your stomach and calling it stomach tanning because you can't get tan internal organs. Yeah, that I mean, yeah. Scrotum tanning at the best of like yeah, I mean, it, apparently baking your nuts improves your testosterone, which it doesn't. That's bromeopathic because if, they can't say homeopathic because it's got the word homo in there. So, I mean, what? I have so many questions, but like, I also don't want to voice them because that gives it more reality to me. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck's Wrong With You? And um, this, I, I kind of want to put this story under the, the category of, you gotta watch your damn kids. Um, when I was little, sometimes that we'd have like share day or something at school, and my mom would be like, "Here's some like candy, like 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 especially Valentine's Day and Halloween. Here's some candy. Make sure everybody gets some. You take it to school, and everybody does that." So I, I, I kind of understand a little bit of what happened here, but also you have to pay attention to what your kid brings home or brings from home to the school, because um. Kindergartner, did I give you the right one? I know you're, this is not what you're that's, saying. What I'm reading is not matching. Yeah, that. that's that that save that one. That one's for later. I'm, I already screwed up. Here, here's here's the one. Here's the one. Kindergartner brings Jose Cuervo margaritas to snack time. That kid came to party. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Parents at Grand River Academy Livonia are outraged. A kindergartner brought a box of ready to drink Jose Cuervo margaritas and multiple students drank from them. Uh, Alex Smith's one of, Alexis Smith's one of those parents. 
Her kindergartner had a Dixie cup full of the mixed tequila drink that she had four or five sips. Uh, Smith and another mom, Dominique Sanders, were baffled when they learned what happened. Daughters were each given what they thought was juice during snack time. In reality, they were drinking Jose Cuervo margarita mix bought, brought by a fellow kindergartner. She, the girl poured it in her cup and she drank it. The girl ended up telling her what it is. She went and told the teacher there's liquor in this cup and the teacher gave her a funny face. What does so? What does one of those parents mean? Is this a common like one of those parents who gives alcohol to their kids? You know, the type <laughs> that old chat. Like, what, what does that mean? It's a matter of they they don't. You gotta watch them like a hawk every moment because if you don't, they pull some shit like this. At least they brought it mixed. They couldn't. They weren't just downing that shit neat. That's you know. Well, they, you know, they're not. They're not heathens. Kindergarten. Yeah, I'm just of a kid with like a tiny little mixing cup. <laughs> <laughs> Kindergarten time. Let's get silly. I. <sighs> you, you just have to. All right. A couple things here. I have a feeling this is a very harried teacher who was not reading what was on the bottle. Like, yeah, just just share. Just just share plain yeah. ice. Share fucking plain ice. And. um. Now you got drunk five year olds. <laughs> I mean, a proper lightweight if he's woozy off to a couple of sips. So that <laughs> kid's got some catching up to do. <laughs> so the, the the parent went with the deny everything route. I see. Like I'm, I'm baffled. I don't even. I don't even own tequila. They must have got them that themselves. Got some fake IDs. <laughs> Telling to shoulder that trick. You know, <laughs> my trench coat went missing. That must be how they did it. <laughs> hey, kids these days. Um, yeah, the the kids are fine, which is, of course, you know, they didn't have that much, but they did. They called poison control, which, OK, fair enough. But uh, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not my favorite. But... Now, here's the thing. This you, you ever hear that whole thing in America about this is going to be on your permanent record. Follow you the rest. I kind of want this one on my permanent record. Because, you know, you, you get into like your senior year of high school. Hey, that's the kid who brought fucking tequila to kindergarten. <laughs> you you want that <laughs> anecdote? You want? Oh yeah, is it, what we got a badass here. Um, yeah, that's probably going to help your employment prospects in the future. I mean, you, I mean, you're 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 practically an influencer in the making right there. Honestly, is you know, can you bring? I mean, it's like it's like a fucking uh, TikTok. Can you bring tequila to kindergarten? Yes. Oh god, no, I'm hearing it in that annoying TikTok voice. Can you bring Yeah, that fucking that robot voice. God damn. So so happy. What are you so happy about TikTok voice? You're driving me crazy. <laughs> it sounds it, you can hear the smile, but it's one of those scary smiles. Yeah. They're smiling through the pain. They're pretending like everything's it's okay. Like at the end of a 15 hour shift smile. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, this is uh from Detroit. Oh my god. I don't believe. I I don't believe in ghosts. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in spooks. I don't. I don't I'm gonna believe. stop. But if I did, this is how you get all of the haunted. Just all of it. Just every all of the haunted. Oh oh. Woman okay, crashed. Listen to yeah, okay, now my, my, my initial sympathy racked right up and then shot to the bottom when I read the word driving practice in cemetery. Yeah. Police in Massachusetts say a woman working to get her learner's permit lost control, crashed, and knocked over eight headstones while trying Ooh. to drive in a cemetery. Officer yeah, you are more haunted than the ride at Disney at this point. <laughs> like, you... That, what, who, what, eight? How did that, like, you'd think the first five headstones would be enough to slow you down. <laughs> Look like, at the front of that truck, too. Fuck. That's a Range Rover, no less. Look at the, yeah, who, that thing's fucked. Who wants to drive in a Range Rover? I'm just asking for trouble. That thing's got more power than sense. But, I like, also, like, I, I get, I guess, I kind of get the logic of who can you kill in a cemetery that already <laughs> dead. But, <laughs> Obviously, there's some obstacles to deal with. <laughs> like, Case in point, you're 
Like, what? Uh, yeah. Again, I learned, it's the eight bit that's getting me. <laughs> eight. I learned to drive in a uh, parking lot at the mall. Like a normal person. Sunday morning. You know, nobody around. Like, who was teaching this person to drive? The monsters? <laughs> monsters? I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it seems like the last place you would possibly decide bumper cars of the dead yelling, Michelle. Like, this. Slam into a funeral procession, like the hearse goes flying. Like, <laughs> what? A lot of strange decisions in this day, on this day. Yeah, just, just that car is proper fuck. Look at it's that. It's missing a wheel. Yeah, well, okay, you hit eight slabs of granite, you'll be missing a wheel too. Then how? Like you, if you're just going by sheer inertia, you would stop by then. This person kept accelerating into the gravestones. They said the 53 year old driver was practicing and accompanied by a relative who was a licensed operator. So what I imagine was, oh, oh no, oh dear, oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh. That's kind of what I'm, I'm envisioning. Switch, but like switch between the pedals is the key. I. What? Yeah. I mean, that's quite old to be learning to drive, but like, I mean, kudos for trying something new. Uh, old dog's new tricks, I guess, but... Uh, Whoever... I, I feel like this was like someone tricked grandma. It's like, oh no, I learned to drive. It's a perfect place. It's fine. 53 might be a bit young for grandma, but like, certainly like, aunt. You say that, this is America too. Um... Uh, <laughs> You do realize right now we have a fight where one of our political parties is trying to make child marriage legal everywhere. So, I'm sorry. What? Yo, you, know, you didn't. You, you didn't. Yeah, the the uh, the Republicans are trying to make sure that the right to marry a minor is protected. Protected, as in it already exists. Yeah, a couple places they want. They want more. We should not have let you guys have independence. That's <laughs> fucked up. I'm, I'm starting, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little bit in, in your corner on that one. Oh, let's go to Wendy's. Um, not literally, of course. We're going to the, uh, the next story. Uh, okay. The things people will do, the lengths they go to just to get a, knock a couple bucks off a fucking hamburger. You'd think there would be limits. You'd be wrong. Fake DEA agent busted while trying to get discount at Wendy's. <laughs> David Stover arrested on charge of person. What? Say well, what? Sorry, do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Uh, David Stover arrested on charge of impersonating a law enforcement officer. Funnel, Florida. A man trying to get a discount on his fast food orders accused of impersonating a DEA agent. David Stover, 57, which is definitely old enough to know better, was arrested at the Wendy's. I, I just want to read that again. David Stover, 57, was arrested at the Wendy's. So he didn't. Okay, I again, so many questions. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. Okay, one. Why the DEA? Why not like the fire department or the you know paramedic? Someone who people might actually be pleased to see. Well, that you didn't know, fit his head cannon. Of. That didn't fit his head cannon. Uh, okay, like, it, like, why did he think the DEA got cheaper burgers? Is that a common thing? Is there any precedent for no someone working for the DEA getting a free burger? No. Really, really. Why did he stay after the jig was up and wait for the cops? Like Wendy's isn't going to keep you there. Uh, um. The officer said Stover was demanding a law enforcement discount and started threatening to report staff to corporate for not giving it to him. According to police, Stover was a regular at that Wendy's for the past two years. Worker said he used to get a discount at the restaurant because he had a friend who was a cashier there. But when that worker left their job, Stover started claiming he was a law enforcement officer. Wait, way to shit where you eat, dude. Damn. <laughs> like, lit almost literally. The manager at the store told investigators that Stover would often tell workers he was an undercover DEA agent. Let's just pause right there. You're telling people at the Wendy's, no, dude, it's cool. I'm undercover for the DEA. Because we know if you if fast food workers are sworn to secrecy, it all law enforcement matters. 
I mean, obviously it was worth breaking cover for the sake of Wendy's. Right. It's like your priest, no. your doctor, uh, the drive through lady. They can't, they can't tell anybody. All bound by the same oath of secrecy. Yeah. Um, investigators, the, 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 the way he tried to backpedal on this is so sad. Investigators say Stover denied ever claiming to be a DEA agent. However, he did admit, admit to carry a concealed carry permit badge, which he claimed he showed the employees because they asked to see it. No one has ever asked to see. A, it's like, hey, you got, can I see that badge, that concealed carry badge? That sounds really interesting. No, it doesn't. Concealed carry what now? Concealed carry permit, which I don't believe that's an actual badge. I think he got his concealed carry permit and then went out and bought independently a badge. Uh, sorry, carry to permit to carry what? Like a gun? Gun, yes. Oh, sorry. I see. I'm not quite up to date on this Second Amendment crap. Um, right. So, like, so he was trying to pass off his concealed permit badge as a DEA badge? Yes. Even though it says quite plainly on it. Yeah. Concealed weapon permit. You might as well like use your library card at that point. Yeah, it's pretty much yeah. It's in fact this is sort of like if you get getting a a library card and then going out and have a custom badge made that says uh, registered librarian. That's kind of the same thing. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's just. <sighs> but again, like I don't once he re like. What made him stay in Wendy's after they said, we're calling the cops? Like, was he convinced he could get the cops on his side? It's like, hey, I'm also law enforcement. Don't yeah. look at my badge. Well, look at him. He's white. Oh, that does explain, <laughs> that does explain like, all of that, doesn't it? Yeah. The idea that this is going to be, anytime anyone searches for the name David Stover on the internet, this is what's going to come up forever. That your ass was arrested in the Wendy. Probably the least cool place to get arrested. Among many. You know, there are terrible places to get arrested. There are cool places to get arrested. And then there's just like, you got arrested in the Wendy's? What the fuck kind of loser are you? Um, Lady Meanshow says, at least go to Red Robin. You get endless free fries there with your burger. And we're trying, the people in the channel are like, yeah, where would I go to fake being a law enforcement officer for a good burger? They're like five guys and red rock. <laughs> uh, like, I just, there's so many flaws in this plan. I. Yeah. Again, like, what, why did he think that he was just going to flash his badge? And they'd be like, oh, of course, we'll give you the drugs and alcohol discount. That's but, a thing. But wait, at least he actually had a badge. Because the next one is even worse. I don't, I don't know how this one was supposed to work either. Man caught stealing Audi at Oklahoma dealership tried to avoid charges by claiming Trump made him a U.S. Marshal. So you know when you sometimes yell, it happened again? That doesn't usually happen sequentially in the same episode. Not often, no. Oklahoma man has been arrested. After being caught trying to steal an Audi from a dealership in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and claiming he was acting under the duty of a U.S. Marshal appointed by former President Trump. Man, identified as Kerry Cantwell, allegedly went to the dealership to view the car. When an employee said he wasn't ready to be driven, Cantwell said he was taking it anyway and claimed the dealership stole the car. No, you're the criminal. I'm taking you in. <laughs> Yo, no, Wait, you're under arrest. Does that come under the remit of a of a president, like appointing marshals? Is that I I kind of assumed that's not his job. Well, it is the uh, the enforcement branch, but on the other we hand, we just, just deputize people. Can like if Biden was going down the street, you'd be like, "You're a marshal now." Like, is that? I mean, maybe, but I don't think he would because he's many things, but he's not a complete idiot. I mean, I, he picks the right president to try true, to claim true. being a very stupid thing. Um, but. According to the police, Cantwell told employees police he was a federal marshal and could take the car if he wanted. No, no, that's not how that works. The employees blocked the car in, and when Cantwell realized he couldn't drive away, he got out of the car and began to walk off. 
<laughs> Curses! You foiled my dastardly plan. Well, yes, I'm done trying to commit this crime. See you next time. I'll get it. next time will be my day. Cantwell was eventually stopped by police, and when asked what gave him such grand authority, he allegedly provided the most natural answer. He was a federal marshal, a role he took when former President Donald Trump enacted martial law. Trump Wait, never what? enacted martial law or authorized anyone to steal luxury cars. But the QAnon conspiracy theories long posited that Trump would enact martial law and order mass arrests of the internal air enemies of America, including a group of supposed cannibalistic pedophiles who secretly rule the country. Oh, it's the QAnon. Yeah. So apparently, oh. apparently he thought that declaring martial law means that people become federal marshals. Anyone who just declares himself a marshal during martial law gets to stay one forever. It's like a little loophole in the Constitution. Yeah. It's it's like... <laughs> that photo of him, like, he looks like he's just reacting to something that's, like, like really surprised him. Like, what do you mean martial law is never, de like, declared? I declare bankruptcy! <laughs> Did you think the police wouldn't check? Like, well, that's like, not. Do you work on the honor system during martial law? You got to. That's not fair. You're not allowed to check. That's against the rules. But, but, but I mean, did he think maybe they would call Trump and he'd vouch for him? I mean, yeah, probably. It's an Audi dealership. They've got his number. That makes sense. That. I mean, they, these guys. Yeah. I, I wish I had their confidence without their overwhelming stupidity. Right. You know? well, I think it's the confidence comes from the overwhelming stupidity is the problem. Right. They're, yeah. They're tied into it. You can't have one without the other. Right. It's like, you know, the Hulk, it's got the superpowers, but he's a giant green behemoth that smashes into everything. They've got this overwhelming confidence, but they're complete morons. So it's it's if, like if we ever had like a Florida man with brains, we'd have a supervillain on our hands. Yeah. Speaking of Florida, um, you, you've oh. heard you've heard the the phrase uh, "no shirt, no shoes, no service," right? I had it enacted upon me. Well, uh, this guy did. Um. Uh. Shirtless Florida man accused of breaking into restaurant to steal lava cake, cobbler, and ice cream. I like that they know exactly what he was gunning for. Just <laughs> the look on his face. Restaurants, uh, let's see. Uh, deputies, I didn't even get my ice cream. Deputy says security camera showed John Castor, 42, burglarizing the Red Wing restaurant in Groveland. Um, restaurant's owners told police that Castor broke into the restaurant through a back porch screen. Castor had a small dog and a backpack with him as he ate a cobbler dessert out of a pan. Um, oh, I hate me. <laughs> they say Castor left the restaurant on a bicycle before being arrested. Officers, officials said that while searching Castor, they found a stainless steel pan filled with cobbler, a lava cake, and a large tub of vanilla ice cream on his person. Okay, I mean... Oh, that's almost wholesome. Like he just wanted some. He just wanted some dessert, man. You know, he wanted to get his puppy some cobbler. Yeah, but I mean, I, I feel like the fact that he's shirtless is less important to being denied service to the fact that the restaurant was closed. I, why? Couldn't you found a different restaurant? One that was open and willing to accept cash money for goods and services, you know? Or, you it's traditionally know, how they work. The worst case scenario, you go to Walmart, you grab a Sara Lee, you're done. There you go. You don't, you, you don't, just why the fuck? See, I, I mean, I, I do respect that he didn't attempt to steal any money, you know? He didn't try to break into the, the safe, if that's a thing in restaurants. So he didn't try to get into the, the register. He was just this dude, just want some motherfucking lava cake. Okay, but <laughs> there were better solutions to this dilemma, is the thing. There was an easier way to acquire lava cake. People are like, if he shared with the doggy, the three roses, if he shared with the doggy, then all is forgiven. Well... I mean, the lava cake would kill the dog, but... Yeah, 
yeah, the cobbler may love it. You don't give the dog chocolate. That's a bad plan. Uh, no shirt, no shoes, no problem. I would have trouble arresting a guy with a cute dog. I'd be like, oh, it's okay. You're not going to jail. <laughs> He's he's that that is that is a face considering his choices. Either that or he's thinking, well, how could I have gotten away with it? I mean some amazing mugshots tonight. Oh yeah. That's just you've been, we've had some priceless ones that you haven't been around for. They've just been kind of amazing. Uh, all right, last one. You already I gave you the story to start with, unfortunately, but oh you knew it was coming. Well, oh well. This is from Cedar Rapids and what wrong way driver causes multiple crashes semi spill on I 380 before removing clothing portion of but not so much a naked rampage is like a, a rampage that ended with naked portion of I 380 southbound in Cedar Rapids was shut down Thursday morning, causing significant backups after police say a wrong way driver caused multiple accidents. Uh, Department of Transportation say the interstate was shut down for several hours. Cedar Rapids police say the person driving north on southbound 380 tried to drive between a semi and a car, causing the semi to turn over and spill cord on the highway and send the car in the median. Oh, no. Gentlemen, behold, corn. Not everyone's going to get that, but. I just, I've just noticed the photo and all the snow. Yes. This guy got naked in the snow yeah the driver then continued to drive the wrong way before hitting another semi another semi and another car please say the suspect then got out of his car removed his clothes and tried to run on foot see the clothes were weighing him down he's faster and more streamlined without pants that is just science <laughs> i mean yeah please locate the suspect near center point 42nd in the hospital for evaluation. So, I like that the, the first semi didn't stop, and he was like, "You know what? I'm going to just give this one more try. This yeah, one, this can... one way driving thing still has potential to me. I can, I could get this. I could get this. Just give me semis to come. There's you. You ever watch The Wire? No. Oh wow. Okay, but there's this one scene where cop is very drunk, middle of the night. He's driving home in his car, and he takes a turn really fast and he hits one of those overpass pillars of concrete and slams the side of his car into it. And he stops. And he pulls the car back. He gets out. And he looks at the turn and he sorts of does the angles in his head like fucking algebra. He gets back in his car. He pulls back. He tries to take the turn again. And he slams the car right into the turns into the pillar. That's what I feel like happened here. Can one assume some kind of intoxicant was involved? Yeah, this says this says bath salts to me. You know, we I haven't seen bath salts mentioned so much in the in, in years, which kind of concerns mm -hmm. me. Did they like stop happening, or did the other shit get cheaper? Was this a crystal math? This might have been a crystal. It does have disturbing implications. It's like when you don't hear your kids making lots of noise. <laughs> <laughs> what are all the bath salt people doing? Yeah, we you know, remember that. That was like what? Oh Christ! Almost ten years ago, we started hearing about the bath salt, the bath salt cannibal stuff, and like, oh no, this is the end of the world. We didn't know. We didn't know how much worse it was going to get. We thought like this is the yeah, worst the thing ever. Plague. The bath salt bolt zombie plague seems quaint now. Yeah, we, we thought, yeah, this is the worst thing ever. Drugs will make eat people's faces. Oh, no. And then, no, it, it got worse. It actually got worse. Yeah. Reality Breaker says, when the plague finally hit. Reality Breaker says, Mad Max Corny wrote. That's terrible. Why? <laughs> I, I just. I mean, did they catch him? I'm assuming they caught him. They caught him. His, his lack of clothes did not prepare him to sweet freedom. No. I feel so bad for the cop who has to tackle the naked man. Yeah, you know, it's not often you do feel bad for the cops, but it's like yeah. that that's part of the job is some is naked is going to happen a lot, and you you're the one who has to deal with it. 
somehow just naked people. I I just, I, I'm I'm marking this guy's sorry. Well, it's like every time after the naked happens, it, it's like your chances of escaping the situation plummet with the less clothes you're wearing. It's almost as if that, that there's an inverse r- relationship to the amount of clothing and your chances of escaping the situation. They should put that in the criminal handbook. Hey guys, you want to commit a crime? Wear clothes. Pants Step are one. essential. Put pants on. Yes. Yeah. Step two, do not take pants off at any point during crime. I thought, I'm imagining this guy's mon- mother like running after him. like, stop it, dear. It's your death of cold. <laughs> Well, you know what makes this shit work? It, it, this is like compounding the shit because depending on where you are, the act of taking your dick out in the, in the, the, the commission of a crime, now you're a sex offender. Now you're on a special list. Now you can't live 500 feet away from a fucking elementary school. So, so like, massive car pile up. You okay living there, kids? Get your dick out? That's yeah, the... That's, that's the line. It's like... <laughs> Maybe keep all the criminals away from children, but I guess that would, be, in this day and age, that would be difficult. Yeah. Considering the sheer amount of them. Uh, so what did we learn this week? We've learned that if, if you're going to commit crime, wear pants. Wear your pants. Keep your pants on. Just great for, great for almost everything, including crime. Um, we've learned that maybe if the restaurant's clothes, go and, I mean, you can go to like, you can get like ice cream from a corner store. Get your cobbler somewhere else, dude. Gas stations open 24 hours. Come on. Um, we've learned just because martial law is declared, which it wasn't, that doesn't make you a marshal. You, you don't get to do whatever you want. It's not like you've been knighted or some bullshit. Ugh, thank God these people... Any marshal can make a marshal. I would be worried if these people under, that these people would be doing prima nocta. But then they would have to understand what prima nocta meant. Yeah, let's not explain it to them. It's 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 not English, uh, so they don't understand it. Um, name all crimes in Latin, then, and then yeah, no one will do. Them. Yeah. Um, we've learned that if you're gonna try and fake being a cop, trying to get a buck off your burgers, really shooting low there. Like maybe maybe start with something that cops would get like an a, advantage on. A donut. Start, that'd be the first baseline. Will being a cop help you? Like next question: Are you a cop? You know those. Without option A, option B is just irrelevant. We've learned that uh, if you try to learn to drive in a cemetery, you're going to need Ghostbusters. Maybe just don't do anything in a cemetery except more. Thy dead. It's not like it's not really designed for anything else. You say that, but there is a whole generation of goth who are watching. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, goth, goth, love making place, and dead people. It's that's the two and, options. And they're, they're sitting there going, "Well, there are other things you can do in a cemetery," <laughs> and it's it's unsettling. It's unsettling. And finally, we've learned you gotta watch your damn kids because if you don't. They're taking your Jose Cuervo to fucking kindergarten. They're gonna, yeah, they are just going to have a party at kindergarten. <laughs> Although that, yeah. chi- that child is now a legend. Forever. This will be on your permanent record for life. Bitch, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting this tattooed on me when as soon as I'm 14 or however old you have to be for tattoos. 18. 18. Hey, this kid, 18, 21 is drinking, so this kid's doing what the fuck he wants at any age. He can start it. He's gonna get a little, uh, little prison tat with a biro and a pin, like <laughs> fudge the police. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>